Hey, it's Jordan Pierre, a.k.a. J.P. Dillon, your vintage audio nut here. I've got a KLH Model 25 that had a failure of the right channel. Excuse the shakiness here. This is, after all, just a phone. Uh, as you may know, the older KLH machines use these RCA-type devices. Focus, focus, focus. There we go. The uh, 35044 is a very common thing you see. It's a PNP device. It's germanium. And uh, so rather than trying to locate the older devices, I decided to simply modify the circuit for silicon. And so what we've got up in here now is a set of uh, STMJ2955s. Um, we also did a recap of the machine, and we've got newer uh, components in here. For the Class A driver, uh, we've gone from the original, which was the little space helmet type uh, 2N3645, uh, which is this guy, to a 2SB560. And the uh, input device, which uh, I forget what this was, uh, 2N... Uh, well, actually, it's a KLH label part. It's a number 704. Anyways, I've gone to a low-noise 2SC2240, uh, which helps. You'll need to add 15 picofarads uh, between the base and collector of the 2SB560s to slow it down if you're using silicons as outputs because the feedback loop kind of uh, gets disturbed a little bit and you get some positive feedback. Anyways, the purpose of this video is to show what work was necessary to make this happen. And really, you can leave the emitter resistors alone for this purpose, but the uh, base uh, the base circuit of the transistors is really what needs the most uh, cooperation uh, and some of the collector circuit as well. What you're looking at uh, are the base, uh, the divider network for the uh, uh, current that feeds the base to the output transistors. And the blue resistors, which are now 120 ohms, used to be 680 ohms. And the flame proof devices, which used to be 6.8 ohms, are now 4.7. This was the best combination that I could get for idle current and stability because the silicon devices load down the secondary of the driver transformer more so than the uh, germanium devices. And if we take a uh, temperature probe, this has been running for about a half an hour now, and if we take a temperature probe and we look at the cores, that's the left channel that hasn't failed. The core is about 30 degrees Celsius. And if we look at the right channel, it's 40 degrees Celsius, so there's a 10 degree difference. Uh, and that's, again, after running about a half an hour. And if you really crank up the power, they both go up about the same. They go up about 5 degrees. Uh, but the right, trans the right channel, which was serviced and has the silicon, always runs a little bit warmer. So take that into consideration. Uh, using the original of uh, 10 to 1 ratio, uh, or actually 100 to 1 ratio, uh, I tried a 4.7 and a 470, which biased at about uh, 470 millivolts on the base at idle, but when you turned it up, the loading changed and it dropped down to about 210. You got crossover distortion. So the 120 and 4.7 combination for the voltage divider on the secondary of the driver transformer seemed to work the best. It idles at about uh, 570 millivolts, and when you crank it up, it goes down to about 480 millivolts. So it's still very acceptable, uh, and you get minimal crossover distortion, and it still keeps the circuit happy. So uh, another interesting thing has to deal with power bandwidth of the new and old devices. And if we turn it up here, and we run it up to the rails, that's a, a blistering 10 watts. Uh, but this is at 700 hertz, and if we uh, crank it up the frequency response a little bit, let's say let's go to 7,000 hertz. This is right in the mid-range. We can see that both entities actually have crossover distortion, although the notch on the right channel on the bottom is significantly larger than the one on the left. And again, this was after experimentation but not bad looking. Watch what happens when you get above 10K. At 10K, 
you see that the germanium transistors on the top have a little bit more distorted waveform. Let's go 12, 13, and 13, we start to see some real distortion on the left channel, whereas the silicon device is happy. That's because we're exceeding the bandwidth of the uh, germanium device, really. Um, about 20K, we're still looking pretty good other than the notch, but the germanium transistor just looks like shit. I mean, really. That's just ugly. Whereas that still looks like a waveform. And uh, beyond 20, you can see now that the power is starting to decrease because the bandwidth has been far exceeded. And only until you get to about 45 uh, 45 kilohertz that the bandwidth of the silicon devices becomes evident. And you get a little bit of a distortion notch down here at the bottom. But below 30,000, it's actually pretty good. So it's just interesting to see that. It's not really anything significant. If you want a more hi-fi option for this, I guess obviously go with silicon and modify the set. Uh, you could probably improve the uh, biasing circuit more, but, you know, the guy doesn't want to pay for that, so I just needed to get the set working. So far, it's been running fairly stable. Uh, there's no significant heat. If we just go to the right channel versus the left, output transistors, that's 33, that's 32, 33, so really, they're all idling the same, running the same. So there you go. Uh, you can convert almost anything to silicon, uh, this is thankfully a very simple design that uses a driver transformer, so all you really need to do is establish a, a fixed voltage for the base emitter circuit on the transistors and worry about the very simple uh, Class A stage, which is nothing more than a buffer transistor and a Class A amplifier device. Again, uh, with the 2SB 560s, I had to place an additional 10 pico, or 15 picofarads of capacitance between the base collector circuit of the Class A driver to stop oscillation. Uh, that was occurring on the positive half cycle. But uh, as you can see there, uh, at full output, we're doing a whopping 10 watts per channel, but it looks good. And even if we go down in amplitude, if we go down to, let's say, a half a watt, it's even cleaner. Uh, normally that's opposite. So at normal listening volumes, this will actually sound quite nice. And when you're cranking it up, it's you're not going to notice it too much more. So... I uh, just thought I'd share the video with you. This is a KLH-25, uh, and we've converted one channel to silicon. And uh, I'll take another video of it in operation once we get it all back together. We still have a speaker to contend with. But uh, otherwise, things are going well. So thanks for watching, and uh, more videos to come soon.